Hello and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Wednesday, September 28th. Tesla is making large fleet deliveries at the end of the quarter as it pushes for a new all-time delivery record. Over the last few years, large fleet operators like rental car companies and car subscription services have started to invest heavily in their electric fleets. This has given Tesla a great opportunity for easy and fast deliveries to boost numbers for the end of the quarter. Scott Painter, CEO of EV subscription service Autonomy, told Electrek that they are expecting to take deliveries of about 500 Tesla vehicles by the end of this week. Painter also said that Tesla has let them know that deliveries will pick up in the fourth quarter. Autonomy is expecting its Tesla deliveries to increase 70% in October and 400% by the end of the year. It's currently buying everything it can get their hands on since about 5,000 customers are waiting for an EV. Of course, there is also the massive order from Hertz Rentals, who has already received thousands, but is still planning on ordering over 100,000 Tesla vehicles in total. Analysts are already expecting Tesla to have a record quarter on their hands, and the number of delivery vehicles will determine a big part of the perceived success. Tesla has announced a supercharger price hike in California. After several price increases throughout the last year, many supercharger stations are charging 50 cents per kilowatt hour, which can result in a cost of $30 to fill up a 60 kilowatt hour pack. Now, Tesla writes in an email to customers that charging rates and off-peak hours will change, and this will occur at select stations. I think it's safe to say that the change in rates is going to be going up, and that the select stations will be most, if not all. Of course, the 30 to 40% discount for off-peak hours are typically in the middle of the night, which is off-peak for a reason. Tesla owners in California say that many supercharger stations now cost more than 50 cents per kilowatt hour, but there are still a few stations closer to 40 cents during peak hours. It used to be difficult to pay more than five or $10 for a full charge, but it appears that the early adopter perks of electric vehicles are starting to melt away. Jaguar Land Rover has revealed its program called Future Skills Program. It's aimed at retraining 29,000 of their workforce to acquire the skills to develop, manufacture, and service electric vehicles. This also includes their global franchised retailer technicians, and this will occur over the next few years. They also plan to train thousands of engineers, production employees, and others currently working on gas-powered vehicles. Now, with effective plans over the next several years to introduce new fully electric models and also aspirations to become a leader in the industry, Jaguar Land Rover has made some painful but still necessary steps of pivoting a major section of their workforce. Tata Motors, which is an India-based automaker, has launched a new small hatchback that is electric, starting at just over $10,000 or what equates to $10,000 from Indian currency. In terms of the form factor and design, the Tygo Dot EV, as it's called, looks like your average small city car. Four doors, tiny trunk, and teeny wheels. The tiny car comes with a 19 kilowatt hour battery pack, one of the smallest in production cars, at least outside of neighborhood vehicles, auto cycles, or golf carts. Tata has wildly optimistic range estimates for the vehicle, saying it could get up to 155 miles of range, but they get to that number using the modified Indian driving cycle. I haven't the slightest idea how that operates, but in my experience, I would estimate that the vehicle might get 80 miles of range. But aside from that, deliveries are scheduled to start in January of 2023, and Tata Motors is taking reservations in India right now. SAIC Artificial Intelligence Lab, which is a division of SAIC Motor in China, has announced a collaboration with an advanced driverless artificial intelligence developer called Pony AI. They're going to design and implement a new fleet of driverless Level 4 autonomous robotaxis. In the summer of 2021, SAIC promised to have 40 to 60 of these robotaxis operating in the streets of China before the year's end. But since then, they have spun out their own autonomous focus division, and they are partnering with Pony.ai, which already has four autonomous robotaxis doing paid rides in the streets of China. So maybe that was part of their plan. If they couldn't get there, then they would just buy someone who did. It sounds like the ambitious project for the both of them, and also very thorough, as the company state that they will team up to develop the EV's chassis, also the intelligent cockpit, human-machine learning interface, remote assistance, and other driving technologies. The parent company, SAIC Motor, 
has previously shared plans to begin mass production of a robo-taxi by the end of 2025. Perhaps this new partnership will accelerate that timeline. All right, in today's community comment, and also the opinion time, I'll just kind of wrap them together. Let's talk about the Nissan Aria. I'll take you out to the Electrek Vault, which is just a hard drive in my drawer. I'll show you some of the unseen footage of my time testing out the Nissan Aria. If you don't remember, some time ago, Nissan was actually showing off their customized all-wheel drive technology. They called it E4 Orse, which is spelled E-4-O-R-C-E. -E. Anyway, six months ago, they released a video that depicts this technology driving around bowls of soup on a countertop, and they didn't spill anything with rapid stopping. This seems like incredible technology, one that I was really excited for. Nissan didn't have any of this technology installed on the Nissan Aria when I went to go test it out, but they did pack it into a Nissan Leaf that they had on site, and they let me take it for a spin. This Leaf has the E4 Ors programming in it, and moreover, we had the ability to turn this on or off on the fly, complete with four-wheel drive. Now, I'm willing to bet that the marketing team was not expecting me to pull out a silicone bowl from my backpack, fill it with water, and then set up the camera, but I did, and I took off before they could offer any objections. I quickly realized that the test that I had made was not all that useful. Perhaps I should have made marks on the bowl, but I wasn't thinking quite that far ahead. I really didn't notice any difference in the performance of the water and whether or not the E4 Orse was turned on or off. I was really hoping for some amazing results, something that defies physics, but I didn't see it with my bleak testing materials that I brought from my kitchen. I realized that I was using a cobbled together vehicle and also that this technology was made for other purposes and not expressly for bowls full of liquid. So yeah, Nissan's marketing team did a really good job of advertising a feature that I could not replicate. Maybe when it hits production, I'll be singing a different tune. I hope so, because I think that would be some amazing tech. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electra. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.